So do you all remember the Nicola Badger? I know you're going to have to dig a little deep here because I haven't talked about it in years because it straight up was canceled. But everyone kept sending me this video, mainly because apparently I'm in it several times. So of course that always makes me feel special showing up on million subscriber channels. But also apparently everyone was wrong about the Nicola Badger because they are real and this guy owns them. Everyone kept sending me this video and it's supposed to kind Kind of change the way we look at Nicola. No, don't think about the Hindenburg report. No, don't think about the fraud, the scams, the Trevor Milton trial. No, don't think about any of those things because the badger is real. Everyone was wrong all along. Or at least that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from the title and thumbnail. But because so many people have asked me to watch this thing, okay, I'm finally gonna watch it. I'll react to it here and kind of break down my thoughts as we go along. So sit tight because apparently there's a lot of new information we have to unpack here. What I'm about to tell you is one of the, if not the biggest announcement of my entire career. So this is really a fantastic set of fraud. Their Badger pickup truck, which was going to be their real big entry to the marketplace, fraud. An electric fuel cell pickup to rival Tesla Cybertruck, the Badger. They were going out and buying Ford F-150 trucks and throwing their logo on it. No one should have ever taken the Nikola Badger seriously. That's me! The Badger it's me. is basically dead too. The future isn't looking bright. No, I'm not surprised that the Badger got canceled. Clearly never made a functioning prototype. Something is not adding up here. May I just add, at the time of recording that video, that was true. Like, there was no unveiled Nikola Badger prototype until today, just a couple of years late. You've heard of Elon time, now get ready for Nikola time. But anyway, I guess I was wrong all along. They just decided not to unveil them for some reason. I'm sure he'll explain to us why they didn't unveil them. But let's hear his argument here. You may want to take a seat and hold on to your hats and glasses because what I'm about to tell you might just blow your mind. I'm holding on to my hats and glasses. My mind's gonna be blown. As you blown. can see, right behind me are two pickup trucks, four UTVs, and two way runners. They're a little blurred there. I don't know if you guys caught that. Uh, this is uh, it's some kind of prototype, but it's it's for some reason we can't show them with the Nikola logo. But Nikola is in the title. The Wave Runners also were never shown working. We knew there were like dummy models that they put on the water. Yeah, there was never any proof that they functionally worked. Now we have all these off-road machines. I'm sure we're going to be seeing how real and functional they are very shortly. Let's watch. Before I get too far into the story, I just want to apologize to every single one of you. I wasn't just trying to Thank hide you. things or cover anything up because there was nothing to cover up. It was just a really big, complex deal. We just couldn't really talk about anything along the way. I know you guys probably see me here and there mentioning that I'll have news about Nicola soon. Well, now. Now I just realized I've been pronouncing Nicola wrong the entire time. Apparently you're supposed to say Nicola. Let me double check this really quick. Uh, the the American pronunciation, because I'm American. How am I supposed to say it? Nicola Tesla. Oh my God, never mind. I had it right the entire time. I guess they prefer to pronounce it Nikola, not to be associated with Tesla in any way, even though it's supposed to be the hydrogen fuel cell company. They still call it Nikola, not Nicola, but maybe Nicola's right. I'm sorry. I know that every single one of you is probably dying to see these trucks in action and you're wondering if they actually run and drive. Well, they do. They're rolling. They're moving. Yes, they did drive under their own power. No, they weren't rolled down a hill. The footage. <laughs> That's always a great start, right? Like, as soon as you unveil the product, you have to initially preface it by, no, these are not rolling down a hill using gravity. <laughs> and also, they are under their own power. I'm not sneaking a cable from underneath the stage powering the vehicle. I don't know why you guys would ask that, but I'm just trying to let you know we're not doing that again. We wouldn't make that mistake a second time. I promise you, th these things are not rolling down hills. Can you imagine if Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone like that? Like, this is super real. This prototype is self-powered. This is not fake. This is not artificial. I swear to you guys, this is actually a legitimate product. It is driving! That's that's at least uh, 30 miles per hour. Of course, we couldn't take it on the freeway. The charge port is in a horrible location, by the way. Oh, I mean the hydrogen refueling port. My apologies. It also doesn't seem very flush. Not giving me very aerodynamic vibes. But yes, it does appear to be real. And I do believe it is not rolling down a hill. In late 2019, a good friend of mine, Trevor Milton, reached out to me. To oh, we're going straight there. Trevor Milton, 
uh, convicted, found guilty in court, uh, proven time and time again to be spewing inaccurate information in order to mislead shareholders, told us that hydrogen refueling stations were going in the ground as we speak, and they were definitely not. He also said that the original Nikola Trey was completely self-powered, and it was not. It was plugged in via cable underneath the stage. Don't ask me how I know these things, but thankfully they're prefacing it in the beginning. They're not doing that again in today's video, thank God. But anyway, yes, tell us about your good friend Trevor Milton, please. Um, he was interested in partnering with me to release a pickup truck through his company, Mikla. Trevor needed Nikola. somebody who understood trucks, who understood marketing, who understood, you know, how to build a truck for guys like you and me. We're not talking about you know, grocery getters just going around town. We're talking about trucks that can actually do truck stuff. Truck stuff, power themselves, not roll down hills. These are truck things. Yeah, Trevor Milton needed a good marketing guy, so he found one of his favorite YouTubers. That's, that's appropriate. I believe the share value got somewhere around $90 a share at the peak. We had a lot of people that pre-ordered these trucks and there was no compensation. I wasn't getting paid for my services, but instead I had an opportunity to collect some uh, stocks on the back end if the project performed like everybody hoped it would. So there was potential to make, you know, a lot of money and do really well with it. Summer 2020, you know, the world's going crazy over Nikola. I'd say it was a little bit of a stretch to say the world was going crazy over Nikola because just like today, most people were fairly critical of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, that they're not economical, the infrastructure's too complicated, they're not as efficient as full electric vehicles. And there were a lot of people skeptical of Nikola from the beginning, even before the Hindenburg report dropped. They were like, you're taking order deposits with no functioning prototype and all you have is some renders. Yeah, it felt pretty sketchy even for the EV startup space for company to be going public before any products had actually been delivered. There were lots of people skeptical of them from the beginning, but yeah, he's trying to make the case that only people were skeptical as soon as the Hindenburg report dropped. I remember because I was covering them pretty closely at the time, we were all skeptical long before that report dropped. That report was kind of more of like the nail in the coffin. They essentially compiled a report trying to make a case against Trevor that Trevor was a fraud. Nikola has now made a statement with regard to some of the allegations made by short-selling research for Hindenburg is not a research report they say it is not accurate some important context that I'll add there is it wasn't the Hindenburg's report itself that tanked the stock so much it was actually how Hindenburg responded that revealed how much of a fraud Trevor Milton was he was convicted it was proven in the court of law and the whole public knew it was because their response to the Hindenburg report was we never claimed the videos of the Nicola Trey were self-powered so they had publicly acknowledged that yes Yes, the Hindenburg report saying that we rolled a semi truck down a hill to make it look like it was operational was valid. They said, hey, well, we never actually said it was self-powered. That actually vindicated and validated a lot of the Hindenburg reports. So it was by their own bad response that a lot of people bailed on the company. I assume that means GM as well, although GM bails on everything. So we really shouldn't be too surprised by that, right? But even so, while Hindenburg was making a case as to why Nikola was fraudulent, they made a pretty dang good one. And Nikola response was not very encouraging. The judge sentenced him to four years in prison, but he said that they, Trevor will not have to start serving that sentence pending Trevor's appeal, which basically means the appeal process is going through. And so hopefully he never has to go to prison because quite frankly, there was a lot of issues with his trial. And I'm not here to point fingers at anybody. I simply just am trying to expose the facts and a side of the story that many of you never really got a chance to hear. I think the best thing that anybody could do right now, if you want to learn more about the trial and the situation, you should read an article written by this gal named Jessica Reed Krauss, and it's called When the Jury Gets It Wrong. Okay, so When the Jury Gets It Wrong was written in November of 2022, and it mainly talks about how juries can get things wrong, but doesn't necessarily go into that many deals of the explicit case. And again, we have public documentation of Trevor Milton saying that they were putting hydrogen fuel stations into the ground when we knew for a fact they were not, and at trade shows telling people that the Nikola Trey was self-powered, it was operational, which he then admitted himself was not true. There was absolutely proof of him misleading investors. I'm not sure why that's up for debate. We're just coming down to, well, you know, the jury system has its flaws. There's sometimes issues in the criminal defense system. So I'm guessing Heavy D is trying to say 
say that Trevor Milton is innocent? At least that's the vibe I'm getting from this. Or at least he thinks that the punishment shouldn't have been as drastic as it is, but I don't understand how that's debatable at this point after seeing the things he claimed. But anyway. I'll just tell you this. I've known Trevor for a really long time. I've watched him grow this company and put- Yes, I've watched Trevor Milton grow this company. It was very fraudulent and very scammy from the beginning. Once he left the company, I think the board kind of kicked him out and he was put to trial. Then they actually started delivering products, surprisingly, only the all electric ones, of course. But yes, I've watched the share price fall from $90 to under 80 cents. But Trevor has built this company off of the backs of other company's design. Anyway, tell me more about your awesome friend, Trevor Milton. He's great, huh? I know that he was doing things the right way because the company was growing and oh, it was thriving. And it was doing the right way. It was growing. It was thriving. The stock was tanking. There were no products being delivered. There were major investors pulling out and there were contracts falling through. But yes, it was thriving. It was growing. We need to make Nikola great again. Put Trevor Milton back and off. No, uh, never mind. Now the company's not necessarily necessarily uh, thriving like it once was. Oh, the, it was exciting. The, it was, uh, you know, a lot of ambition, a lot of passion. Yeah, there was so much ambition when we unveiled the Nikola One and tricked people into thinking it was self-powered. No, it doesn't matter that they've actually delivered semi-trucks after Trevor Milton left. No, no, why do we have to keep delivering products, guys? Let's go back to unveiling things that we have no idea how to mass produce. Let's go back to slapping our logo onto other companies' designs and claiming that they're our own. Let's go back to telling people that hydrogen refueling stations are being installed in the ground as we speak. Now, those were the good old days. Let's get our good old Trevor back. Ugh, I, I hate the new Nikola that likes to deliver things. It's so depressing now, right? When Nikola canceled the Badger program in late 2020, there was just kind of radio silence. Hey, we have some acknowledgement there. He literally just acknowledged that they canceled the Badger program. He uses my footage in this video at several times saying, see, people all said that we shouldn't believe the Badger is real. People said that the Nicola Badger was cancelled, and then he turns around and goes, so the Nicola Badger, you know, when they cancelled that, uh, everyone wasn't really sure what was gonna happen. It was like, why are you picking up my argument as if I was the one cancelling the Badger? It's like, I'm just repeating what the company did. I thought the Nicola Badger was dead because the company said it was dead, and they started refunding everybody's deposits. Sorry, when the actual company in charge of making the product says that they're not gonna make the product and gives everyone's money back. I'm I'm sorry I jumped to conclusions there. I had the assumption that the, the product was therefore dead. That was wrong of me. I should have believed you all along that they were gonna bring it back after they said it was canceled. My my mistake, Heavy D. Okay, continue. And they refunded the deposits. What most people don't know, and what's the crazy part of the story that I'm about to tell you is these trucks actually exist. They're real. It was real all along, and they just decided not to unveil them after canceling them. Why would they do such a thing? Oh, oh, I don't know, but they're real. They're drive. They are real, guys. You can open the doors. <gasps> they have seats. Oh they my are... God. You can open the doors. Did you guys know that? The Nikola Badger is so real. They have seats inside them. You can sit inside of a pickup truck. Oh my God. I didn't know these kinds of things were possible. I guess only when you're powered by hydrogen can you have doors and seats. That's, that's just incredible. These trucks were delivered to Nikola before the Nikola World event in 2020 was supposed to happen. I don't know the exact date. Sometime between October and December of 2020, these trucks arrived at Nikola ready to roll. Not ready to be sold. These are prototypes, remember? These are not production models. I mean, come on, guys. They're, they're prototypes, okay? They're not ready to be sold, but they, they were ready. They do exist. They're very real. But come on, let, let's get real at the same time. They're, they're just prototypes, okay? So, you know, they, they don't expect them to sell them, but they are real. They're so real. He owns them, guys. He, he has them now. I went out there and put my name on this. I went out and put my friends' reputations. Like, everybody that I know, I got them to support this cause because I truly, wholly believed in it. This cause, this, this cause of making a truck that kind of looks like every other truck I've ever seen, but it happens to rely on hydrogen because there's so many hydrogen refueling stations across the country and hydrogen is so much less efficient than electric, but he believes in this cause. The cause of making sure that maybe the Badger could get into production so that he could actually claim some of the shares that he was originally promised by Trevor Milton because like he said, he's not paid anything until the Badger hits certain milestones. I'm guessing that start of 
production of some kind or first deliveries. And because that never happened, he's hoping he gets a payout of some kind. Hope you enjoy your 40 cents a share. So obviously one of the main allegations against Trevor was that the Nikola Badger wasn't real. Everybody was saying that it was fake. Uh, it was never coming. It was never going to be done. It was just a fraud. It was just a scheme to get, you know, deposits. Nikola uploaded to their channel talking about how real the Badger is. He never made a functioning prototype. But while all that stuff was happening, these trucks were just sitting there. But why? Okay, if you wanted to prove me wrong all those years ago when I was saying you never made a functioning prototype because as far as we were concerned, you didn't. For years and years we went by and apparently there were functioning prototypes sitting around doing nothing. So why would Nikola not unveil them? Maybe because they had no intention of bringing them to market or ever selling them and mass producing them because there was no path for that. And maybe everything about Trevor Milton is true that they did unveil renders of a prototype simply to wreck in a bunch of reservations to boost the stock price didn't really work all that much but i guess i was wrong to believe that after nicola canceled the badger that nicola had canceled the badger i'm sorry i shouldn't trust what nicola says my bad my mistake since nicola decided to cancel these programs they needed to show their shareholders that they were seriously uh you know focusing on the big rig stuff they didn't know what to do oh yeah let's let's cut to the picture of the the, the nicola one that never made it to market but we needed to focus we were more concerned about how we get our hydrogen powered semi trucks to market which which uh didn't really happen but what's funny is trevor milton was kind of petitioning the nicola badger in favor of see nicola is a bigger market than just semi trucks but now they're turning around and saying well, you know, the, the pickup truck is more of a side thing. They needed to focus more on the semi trucks, the big heavy trucks. That was the primary focus. But then you go back then, they say, hey, we're not just a semi truck company, guys. We can also sell pickup trucks, which are much higher volume, right? Eh, pick your poison, as long as it runs on hydrogen. The Badgers just sat in the storage room, the UTVs, the Wave Runners, everything was just basically sitting in storage doing nothing. Early 2021, oh we began uh, negotiating with Nikola to purchase these programs from them. It was the most complicated, one of the most frustrating processes of my life trying to get this deal done because there was some really big numbers that we're talking about. We're talking about tens and tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars. He said tens and tens and tens of millions. So I'm assuming he paid about $30 million for these prototypes. Do they work? I don't know. It at least appears they can be self-powered without rolling down a hill, so that's good. But I still haven't seen those jet skis go anywhere. I've seen them sit in a puddle and not move anywhere. Actually, I've seen them move a lot when they're on the back of a trailer, but hopefully these other off-roading machines are actually capable of doing some great off-roading stuff. Let's watch. So the first thing I want to explain to you is the structure of kind of the, the deal here. Myself and Cole, my partner, own a company that's called Ember. Wait, 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 wait. We're bringing in a new company now? This is the part that still really confuses me and I don't think is explained all that well. So he bought these programs or these projects from Nikola to be now owned by this new company that he's formed called Ember. And that's partially why they're blurring the Nikola name. I think that has something to do with the contract. Like, okay, you can have our old Badger prototypes, but you can't show the Nikola logo on the trucks. And they found some loophole because they're still dropping the name Nikola left and right. And it's in the title. The Nikola Badger is real, but I'm getting the impression that the actual company Nikola doesn't want people to think the Nikola Badger is real. Are these the Ember Badgers now? So he bought these projects, but does Ember actually have funding to bring anything into production? Or did this YouTuber just buy a bunch of old prototypes? It's kind of hard to tell, honestly. To take delivery of the Nikola Badger and the UTVs and the Wave Runners, because we are no longer going to use the Nikola name. Um, that didn't what we're not going to use the Nicola name. You just called it the Nicola Badger. We're not going to use the Nicola name anymore, but this is the Nicola Badger guys and it's real. All right. You, you following with this? You tracking with this? Cause I'm a little lost. The only thing that came with it was the intellectual property of the name Badger and the NZT and the uh, wave runners and that kind of stuff. But we did not uh, purchase the rights to use obviously Nicola corporate name, even though they're a partner of ours still on the deal, uh, a minority partner. It's them and us. Me and Cole, majority owners, and then you got the Nikola, and then they have um, a loan against some of the assets. So Nikola has a loan against some of the assets, but they didn't get the right to use the Nikola name, but they did get the right to the name Badger, and they are still a partner in Ember. They're a minority stakeholder in Ember. Oh my God, I feel like everybody needs their own company at this point. Who wants to buy Talos of shares? Are we ready? It was a great deal for everybody. Help them unload a bunch of stuff that wasn't doing 
doing any good and it gave me what I've been waiting for for so freaking long. Guys, this has been such a rough process. We're a long ways off from me making any money on this deal, but I am committed to delivering cleaner power to the truck world. I mean, come on. There's a million easier ways to make money. Why is this trailer? There's only one brake light on. There's supposed to be these other brake lights that turn out. Your trailer's In not working, but he wants to deliver uh, cleaner energy to the truck world. I'm not sure if that means he wants to bring these vehicles into production. Seems to be acting like, okay, I can bring these vehicles into production. I don't know how. I don't know if he has the funds necessary to do such a thing. He's got the badger. He's got the prototypes, guys. He helped Nikola offload them because they were doing nothing with them. Them, so they get some money, which they're kind of in desperate need of. And he gets the, the prototypes, which can kind of work. They're self-powered guys. They're not rolling down a hill. For me, this is about leaving a legacy and delivering something amazing to all of you. As soon as I first delivering. saw the picture of the Badger that it was done in late 2020, okay. all I wanted to do was post it. I want to get into the actual Badger. I've driven this truck, you know, quite a bit since we've had it. It's unreal. Wait, did he just say it's unreal? <laughs> I wouldn't use that word when the title says the Nicola Badger is real. Guys, I've driven this thing. It is capable of moving on its own propulsion and it's unreal. I mean, sorry, it's so real. Now, keep in mind, they are still just prototypes. So I'm not making you any promises or any guarantees this truck is ever even gonna come to the market. I'm not guaranteeing you that the truck has certain performance specs. All I'm gonna do is tell you what my plans are. And my plans are, to take these incredible vehicles and finish what we started. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> I'm not bringing these vehicles to market. I'm not gonna promise you that we're going to deliver these or mass produce these in any way. What I am going to do though, is finish what we started. What did you start doing? You start taking deposits for something that you were never going to release. So we're just gonna continue with the uh, the fraud charges and telling people that we're innocent. I'm very confused. Like, I know that he's trying his best to explain the situation, but he basically just keeps saying, I bought the IP, but I, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with it, but I'll finish what I started. Okay, Kylo Ren, let's let's finish this. Why I was excited about the Badger uh, program in the first place was because it's obviously a battery electric vehicle, but the concept that we had was to make it a fuel cell powered vehicle as well. So you would have a battery and you would have hydrogen fuel cell, way more range, uh, gives you faster refills on the hydrogen tank. It gives you more supplemental power to, like if you're towing or something like that, and you need those peak power demands. How much more extra range? I don't know, I'm not gonna say. How much faster? I don't know, I can't promise you that. I can't talk about the specs, you guys. All I'm just saying is it's so much better than anything else you can think of, but it probably won't make it to market, but that's not the point. The point is I'm finishing what I started and it's not rolling down a hill. Really well on the Nikola semi trucks. So there's no reason why we can't adapt some of that same technology into the Badger pickup. Why not? Just take whatever's in these giant semi trucks, these huge hydrogen fuel cells that only have access to about a dozen refueling stations and just put that into a much smaller pickup. There's just no reason, why not? You know, just move it over. Put the big fuel cell into small truck. You know how electric motors are so weak and so slow, you know? You need that supplemental power from the fuel cell uh, because you have those peak loads sometimes from the semi truck trailer. Because that's the big problem with electric vehicles and towing, right? The motors keep overheating. By the way, we've never seen this thing plug into a hydrogen refueling station and he at no point shows it actually charging. It's possible there's a five kilowatt hour battery pack in this thing that's capable of taking it about 40 miles per hour because he's not giving us really any of the specs and again also not guaranteeing it will ever be mass produced so temper your expectations guys he's just finishing what he started. But nobody has come out with something like this bold and this in your face saying this is going to be a hydrogen project so shooting this video was really, really hard. There what? are so- Did he lose all the stuff already? Oh my God, the lighting's changed. He's not sitting down anymore. Only has the one badger left. Maybe he had to sell all the other stuff to uh, cover his legal expenses. But apparently he realized it was really hard to film this video because he needed to give us more context or more information. I don't know why it wasn't making much sense anyway. And somehow this section of the video doesn't help either, but <laughs> let's watch. We shot the video, got it edited. I watched it and I thought, you know what? There's a couple little parts we got to pick up and what it's I'm shooting right confusing. now is basically me not happy with my own product coming back after the fact and reshooting because it's important to me that this message is clear and accurate. With that said, I want to get into why everybody said that this was a Ford truck. 
when it clearly is not a Ford truck. Yeah, we're not going to talk about any of the confusion surrounding what the heck does it mean that you bought these Badgers. You're not guaranteeing them production specs. You're not guaranteeing that it will ever release on the market. All you're saying is you're going to finish what you started. Let's avoid all of that confusion by saying, guys, this is not a Ford F-150. That it probably should be if you just would have skinned an F-150 Lightning. It probably would have driven a lot longer and been a lot more real than whatever this thing is. But yeah, it's not a Ford, guys. By the way, I never called it a Ford. In all my videos, I said it looked like a Toyota Tacoma with some RGB lights on it. But that was when it was merely a rendering. He's now telling us that this prototype that's never been seen before, that Nikola actively chose not to show the world, probably for good reason, that it was built by Nikola from the ground up. And it is not a skinned version of a Ford. Anytime you're building a vehicle, you got to take it and separate it into basically two different pieces. You've got the frame, the chassis, which is kind of everything bottom half of the vehicle down. And then you've got the body, which is kind of the bottom half of the vehicle on up. Which speaking of, the suspension, all Nikola. The E-axles, all Nikola. But we don't have the permission to use the Nikola name. So we had to tape over the Nikola logo on the front. The logo, actually, not Nikola, but everything else is Nikola. The tires are Nikola. The suspension is Nikola. My t-shirt, Nikola. My beard is actually made by Nikola as well. Nikola headlight, Nikola grill, Nikola hood, Nikola fenders, Nikola wheels, Nikola rear door, Nikola running boards, Nikola bed. Inside the bed is Nikola parts. As you start to dig into the, like, the internal components of the truck, like the electronics, infotainment system, that's all Nikola. The controls, the DC to DC power system, all that stuff designed and built by Nikola. I love the fact that they slap a piece of tape over the Nikola logo. So there's clearly some contract where Nikola was like, you're not allowed to show the Badger with our logo on the side or the front. And then he turns around and goes, by the way, Nikola, 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 everything's Nikola now. <laughs> Infotape, all of this is built by Nikola, but please don't show our logo. There's pretty much been no endorsement from the Nikola company at all. So I'm curious if the Nikola legal team is feeling uncomfortable about this video. And in order to get to that point, there's no way you're gonna go out and build all these new different parts and pieces, like even dumb stuff, like the seat frames and the airbags. Dumb stuff, like the airbags. Oh my God, who needs airbags, right? Dumb stuff like that, you could just buy off the shelf. We don't need airbags in our car. There's a bunch of air in the hydrogen fuel tank. That thing will just explode and protect you during a collision. But I'm hoping that you guys are getting a better picture of what we're looking at here and why. Close that charge flap. It's sticking out and it's in a horrible location, by the way. I feel very comfortable comfortable in saying that the great majority of this truck is all Nikola components that were designed, engineered, and fabricated by Nikola. Fabricated. That's a that's a good choice of words right there. Fabricated. I like that. Nikola went public back in 2020. Their stock price came out and people were really excited about it and they were buying it like crazy, which, <laughs> you know, drove the value up. Um, it got to like $90, $95 a share. And since then, since everything happened, it's kind of just slowly started coming down and down and down. Today, I think it's somewhere around like the 70 cents per share. So to go from like 90 to $95 a share down to 70 cents shows me that the company needs help getting their message to you guys the right way. What I mean by that is you need transparency. You need updates. You need to know what... Uh, updates? Yeah, you don't need like delivery numbers or profitability or sales figures. No, you don't need any of that stuff. No, all you need is updates. You need transparency on... What the heck are we doing with this truck that we built four years ago and decided to just now sell to some random guy? Now he's talking about what he wants to do with it. He's not bringing it into production. He's not guaranteeing any kind of specs, but he's finishing what he started. That's what Nikola needs. He needs someone like me to give vague updates that don't really provide any clear paths or intention to production. But all that matters, guys, is that this thing didn't roll down a hill and it is not a Ford F-150. And that's why I've recently been nominated to be on the board. I'm not on the board yet, but there will be a uh, vote soon uh, with the shareholders. All the stars start connecting. Okay, he's up as a nominee to join the Nikola board. That's why he has to put tape over the Nikola name because he's currently not on the board and he wants to be. So he's hoping that the existing shareholders because this is not investment advice please don't make any investment decisions based on this video but at the same time wink wink he's hoping you scoop up a bunch of nicola shares vote for him to be on the board so that he can get the badger into production with real funding that way he can actually get the promised shares that trevor milton said he would get when the badger entered production years and years ago will it work uh 
I don't know, honestly. There seems to be a lot of positive comments on this video. Maybe this is not a horrible path to getting his uh, hydrogen fuel cell pickup truck reality, but that's the thing. I think Nikola sold this truck to him for a reason. And I don't think they unveiled it at Nikola World for a reason. Or sorry, Nikola World. Get myself and a few other people on the board who are ambitious and excited and ready to make those changes and ready to bring Nikola back to, you know, its former glory where- Back to its former glory. Can we get back to the Trevor Milton days where we just made promises we couldn't keep and we misled investors left and right? Instead of this stupid new age of Nikola where all they do is deliver products to people. Ugh, so disgusting. Why do they do such a thing? And I know the company's been trying its hardest over the last three years, but unfortunately, with everything that happened, it just left kind of a black hole of consumer confidence. Yeah, the fraud, I think, really did that. <laughs> Which, when you have a CEO that is found guilty of fraud, yeah, that tends to leave a, a black hole of confidence surrounding the company. I agree with him on that. I'll be able to implement changes and grow that consumer confidence by simply communicating what's actually happening, uh, developing cool projects, and doing what the company originally set out to do in the beginning, which was change the world create cleaner running vehicles, create uh, vehicles that are more efficient. Well, you know, Heavy D, if you want to create vehicles that are more efficient, you should probably just stick to batteries because hydrogen is an incredibly inefficient form of transport. And that seems to be what everybody's kind of banking this truck on. He said they want the skateboard design. So you got that big battery down there. I'm guessing you also want a fuel cell in the hood. So that adds to your weight, that adds to your complexity. And also the biggest problem with hydrogen, where are you going to get all these refueling stations? They're 10 times the price of an electric vehicle charging station. We don't have an infrastructure for hydrogen. We do have one for electricity. In order to pull hydrogen out of water, you need a lot of electricity and there's a lot of losses involved. So if the focus is on efficiency, uh, scrap the whole hydrogen thing, but if the focus is on how do I get the shares that Trevor Milton promised me all those years ago? Yeah, I guess you just simply have to communicate with investors that you want to make projects happen. I'm not saying production and deliveries. I'm not saying profits or, you know, mass production or anything like that. That, but just communicating that we're making cool projects. That's what really the company needs. Systems and inverters and electronics and stuff that uh, don't exist. And that's always been the, the batteries, inverters, electronics, guys, they just don't exist. How are we making EVs right now without Nikola's inverters and electronics? I don't, I don't know. You're going to see press releases. You're going to see stuff in the news talking about uh, me being nominated for the board. That's the reason why. With that said, none of this is investing advice. I'm not telling you to buy shares. Do not make any financial decisions based off of what I'm telling you today, simply because all I'm doing is getting you guys caught up on a project that we've been working on for a really long time and that we're really excited about moving forward you know now that we've actually got it purchased and we have full control of it it's purchased and we have full control over it and we want to move the project forward but i don't mean mass production i'm not promising that anyway that little side tangent really cleared up i think a lot of the confusion are you less confused now it's a complete truck and it's beautiful. It even has the freaking water fountain in the dash that Trevor promised. Oh my God. Guys, the Nikola Badger is so real. It's a complete functioning prototype. It has a water dispenser. It has a functioning, I mean, there's little buttons on the screen that have water icons. We don't see where the water comes out, but it even has the water dispenser. As awesome as these trucks are, they're nowhere near ready to go. The HVAC- Oh, that, but guys, they're not ready to go. They're, they're prototypes, guys, okay? These are not complete trucks. I know what I just said five seconds ago was that they were complete, but that, that, that doesn't mean they're complete, okay? The infotainment system, not fully programmed. Oh. Heat and cooled seats, that stuff's not working. There's a bunch of stuff that's not connected because it takes all the software and the connection of all these different systems. Uh, but all that stuff will obviously eventually get done as we move forward with the project. It's real, it's here. It's real, the HVAC doesn't work. It's it's real. It's here. The controls for the seat don't work. There's a bunch of software stuff we're going to have to figure out and connections and stuff. I don't know. I'm, I'm not an engineer, but I'm going to make all of this stuff work, guys. I promise. But it's real and it's here. It's for people who are actually going to use their trucks. Take it to the job site. It's got the power inverter and all the plugs and stuff all over the bed. Like plugs and stuff. Okay, guys, not only is there stuff, there's also plugs in the bed. So it's it's got inverters. We got to hook up all this stuff. It, a lot of it's not working. Okay, they're not ready to go. All right, these are prototypes, but it's got everything a truck person needs, like water dispenser. It is designed really, really nicely, and the layout... I like right as he said, it's designed really nicely. He zooms in on a horribly mounted mirror that can't see very well behind <laughs> So like I said, in addition to the Badger, we've got the Nikola UTVs. It's the NZT. Finally! 
Finally, I want to see what these NZTs are capable of. Let's see how the off-roading performance is. You got the standard NZTs, just flat black, and then you've got a Coyote Tan military NZT that was designed specifically for the military. It's called the Reckless, intended to have self-driving capabilities. Wow. Oh, that's just what I wanted. Driving it around at about four miles an hour in a parking lot, covered with miniguns autonomously. Okay, this is what we need to send overseas when we're fighting war. A vehicle that has really good suspension and guns and no one in it. And it just rolls around at four miles per hour to parking lot shooting people. That is so cool. I'm glad we actually have footage. I don't know if he recorded this, but we have footage of it working. It's it, it's real. Like it's really cool technology. And wow. The power in those things is nuts. <laughs> now you guys may be wondering like, hey, you got to deal with Polaris. So what's what's going to happen there? Polaris is one of my longest standing best partners in the world. And I'm not going to do anything in the UTV program until I'm on the same page with them. But I don't know how we get on the same page with Polaris. So that clears up that confusion. He's, he's worked with Polaris in the past and he's not going to do anything with any of these UTVs or NZTs until he's on the same page with Polaris. So is Polaris okay with this autonomous gun vehicle going in circles in the parking lot? I hope they're okay with that. <laughs> My right, we have another NZT, which is just the, the, the base, basically base model. And then next to it- The, we the base model doesn't have seats, by the way. <laughs> There's a Seats cost extra. You have to spend extra if you want to sit down inside of it. Have the next generation of the NZT. Way better suspension, bigger axles. In fact, the E axles in that UTV, they share with the Badger. It really feels a lot like a full-blown trophy truck. The suspension design, everything on it is wild. That is a high performance vehicle. Many of you I, I can't wait to see how high performance it is. Is he gonna show us what it looks like off-road? No, spoiler. He he does not. This is that's that's all we get. We get to see it sitting in a garage. You may have seen this, but at SEMA a few years back, Nikola displayed the uh, cab that goes on the new NZT. Oh, it essentially is like a motor truck with a lot of power and a lot of suspension. Now full transparency, this one is currently working. This one since it sat in storage for three years, uh, needs some software updates and some new batteries and stuff, and we just haven't gotten into it yet. Well, that one just doesn't work, but I appreciate the transparency. These are real trucks. They're very complete. They do everything you'd expect a truck to do, except this one. This one doesn't turn on. It needs some software updates, and Nicola is no longer involved with my Ember company, so we need to find someone who knows how to write software and knows how to connect to this prototype that the world was never shown, and we don't have uh, contact with Nicola anymore. They don't want to be seen with this logo on their vehicle anymore but it needs some software update. I, I don't know. We, we don't really know what this thing is here for, but the Badger is real. Here and promise you all these different, you know, things that the truck can do and performance capabilities and stuff like that, because that's, I don't know. And then the final product that we... <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to hear that part again. Let, let's, let's hear that in its entirety one more time. I'm not going to come here and promise you all these different, you know, things that the truck can do and performance capabilities and stuff like that, because that's, I don't know. And then the... <laughs> These trucks are amazing. This is a cause I'm very passionate about, but I'm not going to promise you that about their specs or their capabilities or that kind of stuff. I don't know. I spent $30 million on this. I don't know. I don't know what they could do. I, I have no idea. That's, that's, why do you ask such specific questions? I don't get what, don't ask me about those kinds of things. God. A product that we purchased as part of this whole deal sits right behind me and it's the Nikola Wave Runners. The those Wave Runners! are so freaking cool. Nikola owned. I noticed that he says cool, not fun. Fun would imply that they work. Cool implies that they, I don't know, they look kind of futuristic, but let's let's see if there's any new updates on the Wave Runners. A proprietary, you know, uh, it's like a patent on a process to stamp thermo mold um, holes for, for Wave Runners, actually own the patent, and which we now own. I know there's some other companies that are messing around with that stuff, and that's probably gonna, you know, become a, a bigger conversation here soon, but uh, we're not quite to that point yet, but I will tell you these Wave Runners have been tested. They've been on the water. Uh, I believe somebody told me they had a two to three hour runtime, uh, which is pretty good. Very, very careful wording he's using here. Honestly, I think he's learned a thing or two from Trevor Milton. It was like uh, someone else has tested them 
We don't know what that test means. Like, did you, I don't know, throw a rock at it and say durability testing? And he said they run for about two to three hours, or at least someone told me that. I don't, I haven't seen them run for two to three hours, but someone told me they did. Again, we have never seen operational footage of these things actually moving on their own power at all. All we've seen are pictures of them sitting in water. So I guess you could say they're watertight and they have a patent on how the underbody is stamped and there should be really big conversations soon but we're also not ready for that yet. Very, very clever wording. They're just really cool, great looking machines. I just... They're cool and they're great looking and they, they can thrust. I'm not saying I want this to all be fake. I genuinely want to see them in operation and if these are capable of operating, I just think they're doing a really bad job showing it. So please, upload some footage of these things actually doing anything that is not sitting in the back of a trailer or sitting quietly in a puddle. I want to show you guys that we did build the badge it was delivered in time for the show in December 2020 that we... I mean, was it delivered in time if the company decided not to show it in the first place? Given the fact that they didn't even have the software on one of them ready to go, ready to be operational. And he said the infotainment doesn't work. The heated and cooled seats don't work. He showed buttons of a water dispenser. I didn't see any water coming out. I'm guessing because there's probably no fuel cell in that thing. It's probably just a tiny battery. But he wanted to show us that they did start the project. And now Nikola is ready to sell all of their old IP for, uh, I don't know, some additional cash to rake in. It runs, it drives, it's the windows so cool. roll down, it's got- Guys, the windows, they roll down. The Badger just does so much truck stuff. We've got windows that roll down, it has seats. Except the NZT base model, that doesn't have seats. But the Badgers have seats and one of them is capable of running. A full interior, it is, a really, really cool Full truck, and it's been interior. sitting in storage for you know over three years as we've been working on this deal. And Why? the fact that I'm now able to announce it, this is one of the biggest moments in my career. This is pretty close to what we would have liked to build for production. But how, how did he phrase that? We would have liked to build for production? So is this just a, a distant dream concept or are we building it again? Well, I guess you gotta vote him on the board, right? This is pretty close to what we would have liked to build for we production. We would have liked. So to wrap this up, guys, I wanna ask you, what questions do you have? I don't want this weird cloud of like confusion where nobody knows what's going on. And well, I'm glad you wanted to clear up that confusion. Now, no one's going to be confused about the fact that you bought old Nikola prototypes and not the Nikola IP and you started a new company called Ember, but Nikola still has a stake in and Nikola is your partner with. And some of these projects that you're promising will never reach into production are not functional and waiting on software updates and connections to hook up. None of that is confusing by any means. I'm just glad that you're continuing what you started whatever the heck you started is it real is it not real no guys i would just like it to be noted when he said you may ask is it real is it not real his answer was no i don't know however you want to interpret that you can interpret that but uh let's let's wrap this up i don't know if there's many people in this world that could have negotiated that deal um because of the patience that it required and just the complexities of the relationships like it was not <laughs> I don't think anyone else would have taken that deal. I, I I hate to break it to you, but I don't think you're gonna get your money back on this investment. <laughs> Seems like you got a bunch of prototypes uh, that you might get a few videos out of, but if anything breaks, if anything stops working, uh, you're out of luck. I don't think Nikola is going to supply you any repair parts and you're going to have to aftermarket the crap out of that thing because apparently it's all custom made, right? Not going to rely on any off the shelf parts except for dumb things like airbags, right? There's no airbags. That's that's good that he's not driving it on the freeway or taking it over 35 miles per hour. That That's a good call because probably not entirely road legal. Well, I'm very excited personally. I have no idea what he just said in that 20 minute video. I still am confused. Did he just buy some prototypes and now he's hoping people will vote him on to the Nikola board so that he can get it into production, maybe? And he's hoping to build hype by making a few videos with this one prototype uh, that a lot of things are not working on it functionally yet. I don't know, this is a fascinating turn of events. I thought the Nikola Badger was, you know, not only dead in its grave, but also decomposed. And now the fact that we're seeing more remnants of this abandoned project after Trevor Milton was found guilty, man, there's still people standing by him and defending him, saying that he was not in the wrong. This is not the uh, drama I expected to see in the Nikola world, but let's see what happens long-term. What do you guys think's happening here? Did you understand 
understand anything about the projects and moving forward with these prototypes, whatever that means, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. And thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.